Good evening. You're watching CAN TV. My name is Erica Reyes Smith. I work for Family Credit Management. We're a nonprofit credit counseling agency. I've been a credit counselor there for four years. You can look us up by visiting www.familycredit.org. We have some fantastic resources on our website regarding budgeting, uh, small ways to save big, just financial health in general. If you need help with uh, managing your debt, check us out. Again, that's familycredit.org. As a credit counselor, I spend all day, every day, talking to people across the country about their finances, about budgeting, you know, and how to get over the hurdles that they have to achieve their goals financially. I have noticed that as of late, particularly the past two years, that there seems to be an increasing amount of financial stress, largely due to the pandemic, of course, and the unexpected things that came up from that. Um, the uncertainty as well going into the future, realizing that suddenly everything that you thought you had stable could be uprooted, could change, you could lose income uh, on an individual basis as well as businesses, and then the economy suffering and the cost of things going up and what your income, even if your income stayed steady throughout, you may have found that things um, increased in price, which gave your, bower, your buying power uh, less influence. So want to look at the causes of your financial stress and talk about that and then hopefully some resources and tools to help you manage uh, and achieve your goals and look forward towards them. Um, so we're going to have to look at what you're trying to achieve, of, go of course, what your goals are. Um, and then in terms of managing the stress, just to know that it's, it's never too late or too early to start looking at your finances and figuring out if you're, you're achieving your goals, whether that's just to get out of a difficult situation or to put yourself in a better situation in the future. So do you have financial stress? Uh, what are the symptoms of that? You know, I talk to people all the time and oftentimes people say things to me like, well, no, I have enough money. I can afford the minimum payment. Uh, you know, I, I can manage. And I'm like, well, well, why are you reaching out to me today? And in digging deeper, you find oftentimes, most of the time, people are just living paycheck to paycheck. So do you find that at the end of each pay period, your balance is just pretty much dwindling to zero or maybe even going overdrawn? Um, are you getting overdraft fees? That's definitely a sign of some kind of financial stress. Uh, maybe you're unable to put anything aside for savings or an emergency net, even if your intentions are to do so, but the, at the end of each pay period, you just don't have anything left. Um, is there tension, both in your social life or particularly in your home life? Are there arguments regarding finances, who spends what, um, and where the money should be going? Or maybe you just feel like you can't afford any luxuries, any life's pleasures, feels like your friends are going out more than you, or you could just never afford that vacation, that dream vacation you wanted to go to. Um, or even just small luxuries, days out, you know, or if you want to stop for that coffee, does it just feel like that's going to break the bank? It's a sign that you're under financial stress. Or maybe you just don't feel in control. Just feels like you're always wondering, where did the money go? Maybe you have a budget and it looks like it should balance out. It looks like you should have extra. And then at the end of the day, it's gone and you're not sure where it went. So you just feel that lack of control. So these are all the symptoms of financial stress. So what is causing that though? What's causing those sleepless nights? Typically, it's just that we're living beyond our means and not really keeping track of it. You know, if you're spending more than you make, then you're probably living paycheck to paycheck. And then probably it's the lack of budgeting or spending plan, as we like to call it. it. Sounds a little bit nicer. Sometimes a budget sounds like you're constricting yourself. But in reality, you're just trying to plan how you're spending every dollar that you make and gaining control over your finances. It gives you control. It doesn't take it away from you. It's allowing you to plan for your future and, and build a savings rather than finding yourself getting deeper into debt. Um, so if you have no allocations or, for, you know, or a safety net, then you are going to find yourself probably sticking things on a credit card when you shouldn't be and then paying interest where you could have been earning interest on your savings for then when you did need that emergency, you had the funds available instead of having to borrow. Um, possibly it could just be the case that you don't have enough income. 
You know, maybe you've been kind of stuck in a low income position uh, that hasn't been giving any raises for the last five years, but inflation has still been happening and the cost of your expenses, expenses have started to go up. So then you just have less and less that you can allocate towards savings, towards emergencies, or even at worst getting to the point where you're starting to have to borrow. If that's the case, then immediately what you should be seeking to do is trying to increase your income. And whether that's just uh, asking for that raise you feel you deserve, asking for a review at work, or maybe taking on odd jobs, babysitting for your nephew a couple times a month, an extra 50 bucks here and there can make a huge difference. Or, you know, if you have the time and the resources, be a Lyft driver, whatever. But just l analyzing that, your income, and where you could possibly increase that, if that's the case. Because maybe you're already frugal, maybe you've already ma been making those living adjustments, or maybe you've lost income due to the pandemic. Uh, and you're just trying to make your lifestyle squeeze into that, maybe you should be looking more so at increasing your income. Or it could be that you you have done that and you're in a great financial position and you've increased your income and you've budgeted really well, uh, but you have in the past had issues. So maybe previously you even had to file bankruptcy. Or it could just be that you fell behind with your credit cards or one went to collections and now your credit score is not where you want it to be or where you need it to be to get the mortgage or apply for you know a rental property um, so you're just trying to claw your way back up from that and unfortunately there just isn't any quick fix to it so it's just about identifying you know what is the cause what is the main thing that's giving you stress um, could be you have a lack of support as well constructive uh, conversations about finances you know, it's really important for families to work together, to have clear communication and goals, ideals. Uh, and if there isn't healthy communication between spouses in particular, um, or one is spending in a way that is detrimental to your, your mutual goals, that can cause some major tension and anxiety about trying to deal with it. Because now not only are you trying to get back on track with your finances, but you're also trying to get back on track in your relationships. And it might not even just be a spouse, it could be a family member, it could be a close friend that has a bad influence on the way that you spend. Um, and you don't wanna ruin that relationship, but you also need to keep your goals in mind. So finding that, that base, that support for constructive conversations is also very important. Or it also could just be that you don't really have any written, um, you know, concrete uh, or realistic financial goals. You know, there could be a pie in the sky idea of where you'd like to be in five or 10 years. But if you don't actually lay that down in a practical way and look at the steps that you need to take along the way to get there, then you're probably never gonna get there. And that could cause you to lay awake at night and think, well, I've had that goal. I thought I'd be there now, five years ago. And now I'm still in the same position okay, I want to be there in five years, but if you don't change anything to get there, well, the likelihood is that you're still not going to get there. And you could even find yourself in a worse situation if you aren't taking the proper steps. Now, I'm not trying to make you ashamed if that's where you are. That's pretty much where most people are. I talk to people every day just really trying to juggle and the confusion of where, where they need to make changes and it just feels you know, overwhelming. So I would like to, you know, look at some ways uh, to, to tackle those kinds of things. But really, it's, it's important that you're honest with yourself and, you know, not generalize in your mind what financial stability looks like. For each person, it's a little different. It doesn't mean I need to be rich in five years. Financial health and stability and relieving financial stress is an individual goal. What does it mean to you? I would encourage you to sit down and write out what are the top three things? What does financial success look like to me? If when I'm lying awake at night, what are the three major things I'm worried about? Is it that I have no savings? Or is it that I have debt I'm trying to work on? I'm worried about my kids' education, or maybe somebody is in uh, medical, needing medical help, and you're worried about those bills. Try and figure out what your priority is, and if you could get that stable, if you could get that sorted, then you would sleep well at night. And yeah, maybe it is that you're looking to just increase your finances and you, you wanna know how to invest and that's what you're gonna look into. But generally for most people, it's just relieving that strain and that stress. So I wanna look more into like, you know, 
what conversations you need to have with people that you know, people that you admire, how did they get there? I can guarantee you that they had a plan and they had a budget. I'm gonna talk about budgeting a lot because it's pretty much how you start this process. It looks like we have a caller on the line. Do you have a question for me? Hello? Caller, can you hear me? I think we may be having a little bit of a technical difficulty here. Well, um, I'm really sorry. <laughs> really interested to hear what you had to say. Um, but what I'm going to really talk about more is uh, about you know that those conversations that you need to have, particularly with your home life. Uh, be honest, being honest with yourself and your partner about what your spending habits are, and without a budget, you know, allocated for spending, then you're really not going to be able to know like who's at fault. Now, I wouldn't like to use that term. It's not something you want to approach with judgment whatsoever in terms of how people spend. And it's a cause for, it's probably the number one cause for divorce, actually, is couples arguing over money and how it's being handled, who makes more, you know, who contributes more. And that really is not the way to approach this subject. Um, so firstly, you have to enter into conversation without judgment. Some people, you know, it comes down to personality and upbringing sometimes, breaking bad habits. Just getting mad at somebody is not going to help them change that habit, and it's not going to help them see eye to eye with you. So a spender, you know, that's somebody who's more focused on the here and now, you know, making the most of right now and life in this moment. They might be risk takers, and that could even pay off for you at times if they're good at investing. And taking a big risk can have a big payoff, but also could potentially put you further into debt. But that is a quality in some people that shouldn't be shouldn't be uh, judged. And then a saver is somebody who is a planner. They like stability. They want to plan for the future um, and set goals. Now, maybe they live more in the future than in the right now. That could be frustrating to a spender who just thinks, well, I want my quality of life to be great while we're on our way to getting there. So you see that both of these things, there has to be a balance. There has to be a sort of communication between people and making sure your goals are in alignment. Um, most importantly, like I keep saying, you have to build a spending plan. Um, so if if your goals line up with your spending plan, then it all it all works together. You know, and it could be that you have children to consider in terms of future education, or like I said, medical things that could need to be addressed. But you're not really going to know how to allocate those funds if you don't have a monthly spending plan. You have to know where all the money comes from, all resources, whether that's one person working in the home and the other taking care of the kids, or maybe somebody has a part-time job or gets extra funds for you know, working, doing something from home. Look at all avenues of income and then all avenues of expense. Of course, the most important things are your living expenses, keeping a roof over your head and yourselves fed and warm, um, and then you know, taking care of your vehicle, those secured debts that you have. And then if you have other debt as well, credit card, keeping on top of that to make sure that you know you keep your score in alignment because a credit score comes in very handy in, in more ways than you probably realize. And it becoming more and more important in the future, even in getting a job or applying for an apartment. Uh, some, some people in dating agencies even uh, allow access to that. So keeping your score high is also very important. And then figuring out after all of those things, and then also adding savings into that, building your safety net, after all of those things are covered from your combined budget, uh, then what do you have left to split between the two of you for just you know, any expenses or, or any, any frivolous spending, I suppose you could say. Uh, and then there's no judgment between how your partner spends, and then you get no judgment for how you spent that. And I would recommend not looking at it from a terms of who makes more money, so who gets more money. You have to divide this evenly, just like you divide your responsibilities evenly in the home, and you're, all, you're both contributing. And it shouldn't also be the case where maybe all of it's in one bank account, and then every time one person wants to spend, they have to ask the other partner for money. That kind of situation can really build tension in a home and build resentment on both sides. 
It's where the person, of course, who has to continually ask for additional funds has resentment towards the fact that they have to, as if you know they're indebted to the other partner. And then, of course, to the person who is continually having to be asked for those funds could start to build resentment for the fact that they have to consider the value of it for that person, if it's worthwhile, continually feeling like they have to say no. Um, that builds re you know, resentment and tension in a relationship too. So with that, my recommendation would be that maybe you, you know, if you have a joint bank account, but then you set aside separate accounts, that the extra funds just get split evenly. There doesn't have to be a discussion about those funds of how it's spent. If somebody wants to spend it on shoes or somebody wants to save it up for a trip, that's entirely their choice. And no more judgment there in the household about that. So it's about coming up with a plan first, covering all expenses and everything, savings, debts are covered, and then even, evenly dividing what's left, I think is a good course of action. So you really do have to consider you know, your mindset towards your finances. Um, that could be the underlying cause, actually, of your stress, and not necessarily external factors, just the way that you see it. It, it might not be that you don't have enough income. It could just be the confusion about where you're supposed to put it and then not addressing that and just allowing it to kind of drift away into different pitfalls and different areas. So try to identify what is your, your number one cause of, tr of stress. You know, don't focus on too many things at once and then try and identify, you know, one thing that you can start to do to address that. And you might find that addressing that one thing uh, starts to tackle other areas of stress in your life. And if you don't have a budget, or even if you do, get as detailed about that as you possibly can. Don't have categories for miscellaneous, because that's where your pitfalls are. You probably know how much you need for utilities, for gas, electric, for your mortgage or rent, for your car, for gas on average. And so where's the rest of it going? And so building this takes time, okay? You're not gonna be able to just sit down one day and write it all out. You're probably gonna have to save receipts. You're probably gonna have to analyze it over a period of months. Set down what you expect you think you spend in certain areas, and whether that's work lunches, coffees, um, gas mileage, what you expect that to be, and then at the end of the month after you tally all your receipts together, what did you actually spend? Does it line up? And if it doesn't, then you can see specific areas that you need to make adjustments in. So that will start to get you on the path of like, okay, these are the areas I need to trim up. And then think about what are you most motivated to address when you've looked at all of that. Are there things that are on a time constraint? So for example, maybe paying a creditor by a certain time period prevents that card from falling into collections and hurting your credit score. But is there something else on an even more urgent time constraint? Paying for a secure debt like your auto loan. If missing that payment means you lose your vehicle, then clearly you should be prioritizing that over the credit card debt. You know, losing your car means you lose it. You know, your, your transportation to work, you lose income. It has a knock-on effect. So if you're in a situation where maybe not everything can be addressed at once, take it easy on yourself. Prioritize the most important things first. If you can't pay a credit card, talk to the credit talk to the creditor. They oftentimes will offer deferments or, you know, just, you know, a lowered payment for a time period while you can get yourself back on track. And remember that that's not going to last forever. You need to figure out a way to get back up to the regular payments or you know talk to a credit counselor look up a you know a debt management agency like ourselves um, something that is nonprofit that's free that'll give you free consultations you, know, you got to be careful who you're talking to do your research uh, but yeah to make sure that it's somebody who's going to not take advantage of you but give you sound advice and maybe even be able to help with your credit card debt if that's something that you're struggling with good evening ma'am can Hi, you hear me i can hear you Okay, sorry. <laughs> Hi. Do you have a question? Thank you. All right. Um, so, yeah, basically we were just talking about, um, you know, keeping up on your debts, uh, keeping everything 
up to up to speed. But like I said, being kind to yourself. Um, if uh, I, I like to compare it to a diet, sometimes see people going on a diet sometimes feel like that's just you know it makes you miserable. So you don't stick to it if that's the case. So the same goes towards your finances. If you're going to set yourself in a situation where you think you're just going to be miserable and feel you know constrained, then you're not going to continue with it. You've got to look at it I, like a lifestyle change. I have a goal to buy a house hopefully in a couple of years, but right now I have credit card debt and it just feels like an impossible goal. Uh, do you have any suggestions on what I could do? Sure, yeah, that is such a great goal. Thank you for calling and a fantastic question. Um, you know, getting a getting a house is a, an amazing investment towards your future. So understandable why you want to get there. And it can seem like an unachievable goal, especially if you have obstacles in the way, like credit card debt. Um, but yeah, getting there, especially if you can swing like a 15 year mortgage where you have it paid off in that amount of time and then you're no longer paying rent or a mortgage, how great is that towards your future, towards your retirement? So, um, and I'm glad you use that term goal because yes, you should see it as something that if you're not ready for it and it, you know, have obstacles in the way, then you have to look at it for further down the line. And like we've been talking about setting up the steps of how you get there and approaching it kind of one day, one week, one month at a time, one year at a time for how you get there. There's an acronym actually that's used a lot in the financial world called a SMART uh, goal. Um, and it's just a way to uh, translate that goal into a format that is more measurable and makes it more achievable. Good evening, ma'am. Um, yeah. Like a lot of parents, when they got a high school student and they get that paycheck and they squander on a lot of different things, one of the things I did with my daughter was I took a third of her paycheck. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to hear about her personal problems. She couldn't pay her cell phone. She couldn't get her hair done. Uh, I was low down, dirty daddy. <laughs> but on a graduation date, she didn't realize I saved up all that money, and she had a check for something like under $4,300. And I wasn't low down, dirty daddy no more. <laughs> and she learned the power of savings and yeah. that's what I would advise parents these days when you got that high school student mm -hmm. start a saving account and don't even let them know about it they may not like it you know when you're when you taking that money out out uh, every week or so but they'll love it come graduation day bye oh thank you so much for sharing that that's very inspirational and well done for managing to do that and following through in the end to make sure that she gets those funds and understands the value of savings you know and a step further to take could be like giving advice on how she should be then reinvesting that it's money she didn't even know she had so if she can put that right back into something some kind of an investment to build even further towards her future especially starting that young she could really set herself up for healthy retirement and yes and just also instilling that value in someone for what savings can mean and, and realizing that, well, she probably didn't really miss that, like not getting her nails done over the years, how much did that really matter? Now look what she has. And so I commend you for that, for teaching that. That's that's very good. Um, but yeah, if say, say you have goals going back to the previous caller, what she was asking about, you know, starting to eliminate credit card debt, um, setting an achievable goal, achievable goal. So like that little acronym, uh, you know, it's silly, but it needs to be it needs to be addressed so s would be for specific so the more specific you are about that the better not just like well i need to put money aside for a deposit but i need to put aside five thousand for a deposit or maybe in that case you have three thousand dollars worth of credit card get debt i need to clear three thousand dollars worth of debt be specific about your goals uh, measurable it needs to be something that you can actually track that you can take a look at and see that you're making progress towards that goal how much does it need to be per month if you're trying to save a thousand dollars per year or knock a thousand dollars off your debt per year a hundred dollars per month roughly you know when you account for interest and then is that achievable so then looking at your budget and saying okay do I have extra in my budget do I have an extra hundred dollars that I can actually make that work that's fifty dollars per paycheck 
is that achievable for me and I'm still able to cover all of my expenses. And then relevancy, it needs to be important to you. You're never gonna get there if, if your goal is something that somebody else is doing, you just took their goal on, or they just told you that that was going to be an important goal for you. It needs to be relevant for you, otherwise you're not gonna stick to it. You're not gonna see yourself have the discipline for it. Also time bound, you need to set a deadline for this, a due date for each month of what, when, you, when you allocate those funds and where you expect to be in a certain time frame. So if it's credit card debt and say you're saying, you know, I wanna, I wanna do $250 per month towards it, that means in th uh, three months I will have paid off $750 or you know, maybe there's some interest. So my balance should be 2,300, you know, set yourself like these dates because it's in our nature that we continually will procrastinate, push back, dates. Look at like, well, actually this month it seems like it would be really fun to join my friends on that weekend trip, so I'm going to push my goal back another month or two or three. And if you continually do that, you're not going to achieve your goal or you're going to achieve it years later than, than you had hoped to. So yeah, maybe it's a case where, you know, you're already spending $150 per month on your credit card, but that's just the minimum and it's just barely chipping away at the balance. Uh, then you know, you'll need to pay more to get to get to that stage. Uh, looks like it looks like we have a caller. We'll take another call. Hi there. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. It's a great show you're doing. Um, I just want to ask a question. How long after a bankruptcy do I have to um, do I have to wait before I can uh, file for a? Uh, I'm sorry. Get a a mortgage loan. That's a good question. I mean, a bankruptcy Thanks. obviously can have a huge impact on your credit score, but it pretty much is a one and done. So that impact is right then and there. And it does, of course, have an impact on your score over time, but it has less and less impact as you go. It will stay on your credit report for 10 years, but it doesn't have the same level of impact on your score as when you first initiated it. And be careful if you are considering bankruptcy that applying for it will show on your credit report even if that bankruptcy gets dismissed. And then all your debt still comes back on and it will show that you applied still. So should be a last resort. And then in terms of when you can apply for a mortgage, there isn't like a law to state that you can't apply for a mortgage at any time after you file bankruptcy just that it's a p impacting your score so much. There are things you can do to counterbalance the negative effects of that bankruptcy. So you would probably, even if you're not ready to get that mortgage, talk to a mortgage lender, ask them what their requirements are to qualify for that mortgage. You know, maybe they review your credit and say, well, we want your score to be in this range. But we also want to see that you have a line of credit that you've been able to pay on responsibly over a number of years, keeping the balance low. You know, maybe they can offer you something like a credit building loan, a CD loan, or a, credit, a secured credit card. So long as you keep up with the payments on that, it's super important, and keep the balance low. Pay it off every month or at least keep it under 30% of your available credit limit. And so those are things that you can do to start building your score up even after bankruptcy. Um, one great thing with bankruptcy is then, you know, the, the debt is cleared, your debt to income ratio should be improved. And so, yeah, I would just say speak to a mortgage lender because it'll, bankruptcy will have different impacts depending on where you're at with your score, of course. It's not something you can get removed and there isn't, like I said, any quick fix to your score. Um, but you can do things to counterbalance it, get yourself in a position faster. And I've seen people successfully apply for mortgages within years after filing bankruptcy. It's not the end of the world. It just means that you're starting kind of from scratch um, and with something kind of against you that you're clawing back from. So again, you know, be patient with yourself. Uh, set yourself these goals. Take it a day at a time. You know, it could mean that if you need an extra hundred dollars per month to go towards a, you know, a secured loan or something, where does that hundred dollars come from? Okay, well that's twenty-five dollars a week. What can I look at in my budget that adds up to twenty-five dollars? Is it that I just, you know, take work lunch, buy lunch instead of taking lunch to work? Is it coffees that I buy? Is it? the extra bottle of wine on Wine Wednesday that you could eliminate, that could easily add up to $25, or then maybe you stretch that even further, and then you allocate those funds towards what your goals are, whether it's savings, whether it's 
you know, trying to build your credit, paying debt, um, whatever, whatever, wherever you're at, just taking those small steps and not being overwhelmed, being kind to yourself and sticking to it, making sure it's achievable for you is what's gonna help you get there. And it looks like we're pretty much out of time right now, but again, feel free to look us up. Uh, again, my name's Erica, I'm with Family Credit Management. That's at www.familycredit.org. Uh, there it says, take control of your debt. You know, there's some great tools on there. Check out the resources page. Contact us if you have questions. All of our counselors are nice. Uh, but thank you so much for your time, and I hope you have a great evening.